recording at this. What? No, I'm recording in OBS. We have like yeah. an image. Oh, so his, oh his, I see. Did his video footage. Just I, I thought. I, okay, so I thought you had the audio, and then you would like put it into like after. Like, I used to do that, but it was just like uh, too much fucking work for like. But then you can edit the audio too. Yes, but then I said it's too much work. Like I, the <laughs> podcast is supposed to be like extremely low effort for me, because I don't have time to do too much else. Welcome everybody to the Game Development Club at San Jose State's podcast episode number five. Episode. We're on the train. We're on the train. This is the poor audio quality. I apologize, but we're riding back from the Unity offices, and they were kind enough to give us a tour of their San Francisco office. Uh, that's more or less what we'll be talking about the entire time because I am on the battery of my life, uh, my laptop. That's essentially our time limit for today. Okay. But yeah, so joining us for the podcast, we have of course myself and Kevin, Lily, Adam. Do you two want to join in? David. Tom Sawyer. <laughs> uh, we got Tom Sawyer and David <laughs> off in the distance. Not really sure if they're coming out too clear. But anyway, yeah, guys, Unity. So first, Mark gave us the historical uh, context of the building. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I got like a, a uh, what's it called? A Doctor Who phone booth kind of effect where it looked really small on the outside. Yeah, it actually did. Yeah. It was a lot bigger. But no, but then, then you go to the ceiling and you see every other building's like twice as tall as Yeah, it. yeah. Right. And then you wonder, man, is uh, did they just have did they just have a really good, not architect but room designer to make it feel so spacious, or is that just? Yeah, I, I don't understand. I, just I got think some there black was magic there was on. definitely some clever use of space happening there because yeah, they had a lot of room, especially on floors above that. It felt like it was just wider than the first room we were in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, totally. I mean, maybe it's just an optical illusion. <laughs> maybe the offices weren't actually that big. We, we were just taken to. We got taken out to their. Um, uh, we we they actually when when we first walked in they uh, they smoke gassed us and then they put they put us in, the, in like super yes. reality virtual headsets and yeah, that the whole entire time, thing was VR yeah yeah the entire thing was VR and then we left and we just they we walked this out normally and it's like oh wow jeez like another but actually yeah it was pretty large um, yeah uh, so we got we got the historical thing we got we got food there I mean the food was pretty awesome it was I guess. Pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty great. Yeah. What, did, what did you guys have? I had uh, I had the steak, I had the, the the truffle fries. Those are pretty solid. Yeah. The busted, what's the best yeah, sauce and carrots? Tr- truffle fries tr- dried up really fast, though. I had the fries, the steak, and like the salad. I had fries, steak, some of the chicken, and some of the Brussels sprouts and carrots. Yeah, I did yeah. steak and chicken. I, I wish that the fries had been a little steak and shake. What? The the steak and chicken. Oh, yeah. Gotcha, steak gotcha. and shake would be interesting. The steak and shake inside. Like actually inside of the Yes, of course. Oh, okay, cool. But yeah, so uh, so after that we of course did the Q and A session. I think that's where the meat, most of the meat of this podcast is going to be. Because that was like what three minutes. So and we played some VR. We played some VR. But the main thing was the Q and A where we got to ask them some questions. Uh, I think we can just kind of go through some of those. Uh, some of the answers that you remember, so we can kind of reflect on them, break them down a little bit. Yeah. Um, one thing I'm wondering, Carlo, is if you ever took the question list. You, did you hand that? You I handed that to well, Mark. Well, I, I gave it to Mark. And he, he was saying that he was going to use it as a reference for uh, to ask us other questions if if we didn't have any at the time. I think that makes a lot of sense just because we might we probably might have had yeah, I think we did have a lot of good questions uh, okay. pop up. I'd love to see that list and also <laughs> yeah and I'd love to run through that list and try to find some good answers for those. Oh oh I see what you're like, saying. Could you just use them as a reference for this podcast as well as um, for future reference of uh, people in the club who didn't go to the event or. Uh, who want to remember answers? Yeah, I mean, answer. you know, absolutely. Um, let me go ahead and pull that up real fast. But in the meantime, does anyone want to talk about a specific uh, question that they had answered? I know, I know. Uh, Adam was talking with someone. I know Lily was talking with a uh, with a recruiter. I think. Um, I was talking with Mark, and I asked him, um, "What does Unity have to offer that other game engines didn't?" And he said, uh, outside of just like some features that Unity might have that other ones don't, he said the main thing is the community, because the Unity community is a lot larger than other engines. And also, he was—I think they—he told me that if you look on people's resumes, Unity developer, I think he said it was like the sixth most common thing for like I think in the engineering tech side. So that was pretty big. Yeah. Okay. It it definitely I mean it, it's definitely a large community, and I was I was also asking him about. Uh, Unity's accessibility um, and how some other engines like Unreal and Game Maker have drag and drop options or options that don't necessarily require coding. And he said he, he was very he was very hesitant about answering because he, he mostly just told me they're working on it and they are most definitely probably working on it. And um, I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. And 
look at the list of questions here. Okay, here we go. Okay, so does Unity offer any internship opportunities? Yes, they do. We spoke with her internship uh, hiring manager. She was very nice. She uh, she looked over. I think Chaz's resume was like really impressed actually. Yeah, yeah. Chaz's resume was really impressive. I looked at it. And we he actually showed off his uh, VR game dot shopbot. Really awesome. Oh yeah, yeah that was polished. Uh, uh, Vincent walked into the room and he said, "Oh, who made this?" I mean, no. He said, "He said, who's who? What game is this first? And I said, uh, "I'm not sure. I think Chaz made it." And then he was like, Are "You for real?" Yeah, Chaz, Chaz worked really hard yeah. on it. It's really awesome. We got the reload mechanics down, uh, and everything, right. and the movement as right. well. Uh, if so, then what, are ty what type of qualifications are you looking for in potential hires? They mentioned, uh, or at least projects. when I, yeah, projects a lot, have a lot, have a diverse, not that necessarily diverse, they but have projects that you're interested in. I think in. that they put a very big emphasis on, like, have pa projects that you're passionate yeah. about, yeah, because yeah. your passion often shows through in your projects. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. So, and that will reflect on your actual interest. Right. It's crazy because I have been asking for advice from just, like, the adult influence um, um, not uh, wait, next what did I just say? Right. Yeah, people, yeah, yeah. people that I know just in real life that I talk to regularly, mostly adults, have told me a lot about trying to get job experience sooner than spending summers trying to develop my own individual projects. But now we walk into Unity and I get exactly the opposite. Yeah, yeah. It's like passion projects are the way to go is what they're saying while you well, have time. I feel like I, that well, depends I did, on I what did. industry you're getting into yeah. though. Because I, well, I also did talk with Mark and he told me that it's probably best to make sure you, that you are also tailoring your resume to where you're hiring. Yeah. Right. Or, or yeah. trying to get hired for it. And I think for you, it is important for them to look at projects. I think, but he yeah. did also mention that like having skills at the top is obviously good for Unity, but it might not always work that way for other jobs. Yes, right. No, yeah. I, I mean, if you want to reference, I was talking to my dad. He's like in the software architecture field, right? So you're saying when he hires people, he the first thing he usually looks for is like work experience or if they're straight out of college, like how well they did in college and like what technical skills yeah, they have. Yeah, she asked me, to, yeah, she okay. told me that it was a good idea for me to put in my GPA unless it's been two years since I've been in school. Yeah, so I just recently graduated and I should put my GPA in. Yeah, because, but I mean, I feel like if you're doing something in the gaming industry, they probably, because that's more of a creative industry than anything. Yeah. Because if, if you're doing something like software architecture at like a big firm, like specifically my, my, like my dad works at Oracle, right? So that's, that's a very technical field. So they need like technical skills. But if you're doing something like Unity or like a game company, they want, that, that is a creative field. So you, you want to show like a lot of passion for that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'd imagine it would be the same thing at like animation there. There was yeah, there was some other stuff like uh, for animation portfolios. The oh, it was first six seconds. That's what yeah, for, yeah, first six seconds of a resume. Like make sure you make a really strong impression. For animation reels, or like it, when they ask you for an animation reel of a certain length, seriously keep it a certain length and show off as much like show off as much as you can in that first six seconds. And that, that also applies to like resumes like. People do not. Uh, people who are hiring do not look at resumes that long, and you have to be able you're, to. You're gonna put the most important information. Important th that, and then you get them, and that's how you get them to re look at it longer. Yeah. Like you get them interested, in like okay, this is looking like a good match, and then you you, know, you get the you then that's, like the 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 resume's job is to land you the interview. Yes. That's that's the whole point. A really interesting frame of reference for that that I find just because it happens to be six seconds is the length of a vine. <laughs> you guys remember vine? Yeah. Because. Yeah, yeah. You can what yeah, you can yeah. show in the length of a vine. That would be yeah. A lot of popular viners got uh, um, got uh, acting jobs yeah. because of their vines. Yeah. Only it just takes six seconds, right? Yeah. Yeah. Six seconds is actually a lot longer than it feels sometimes. Yeah. Like if you look at a lot of vines, you're like, that is not six yeah, seconds. Yeah. Uh, what is the best path to work for Unity if you're a software engineer who primarily works in C sharp, Java, and Python? Uh, the answer that I think was there's no path. Good luck. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, the very okay. So specifically, a lot of the, I think a lot of people were saying they didn't have a CS background, yes. but would get into CS because of like they did work in CS, or they had like CS projects. Yeah. But then the people who were like CS majors and developers, mm -hmm. I think uh, they too were like, yeah, it was mostly the projects I worked right. on. Yeah, yeah. It seemed like the one thing that was true for most of them that didn't start in a computer background kind of a thing was they approached the language either between jobs or as a result of the job oh, yeah. they got that aligned with their major and, and that's I, when they made the change. I do want to bring up the point that 
a lot of them echoed was like uh, we're, we're putting a lot of emphasis on projects because they put a lot of emphasis on projects yeah, to us every <laughs> single like whatever anyone asked about like yo what do you look on a resume no, they projects. Just said projects yeah yeah what have you done and then the next person will be like yeah yeah those my, my projects got me this job it's like, oh yeah like, hey my projects got me this job <laughs> oh dude my projects got me this job Whoa. Yeah. yeah no but yeah that's that's a lot of the emphasis that they put so this might be a unity specific thing it might just be a game like at mark like uh, i think i, I like, think it could it definitely applies to like games game i in general. i don't think this applies yeah. to every job yes yeah, yeah yeah that's actually when i made uh we went when we went to gdc i ended up talking to a person gdc in that uh, must have just been last year yeah 2017 um no 2018? yeah the 2018 one that's the start of the year um talked to to roblox very briefly and i was like what the heck why not try for an internship and when yeah. I first sent uh, the, the contact I had a, a resume, it was kind of the general job experience one, but she asked me for one that was project based. So I now have two, which are specifically these two odd sides I've heard as an approach to, to getting a, an internship is show the side of where, where you've worked and show the side of, of what you've done in your free time. Um, and I guess those two things apply to two totally different sectors of places you can work, but for Unity, it's projects. That's what we learned today. Uh, and independent projects as well. Like especially another thing that um, uh, what was her name? Yvonne. I don't remember. She was the oh. she was the artist. Yes. Uh, actually, her name was like Evie. 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 Yeah. Uh, she was she was mentioning that. Um, oh my god! I lost my train of thought because of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, uh, she was an art. All right. Uh, in the independent projects while she was in college were very important. Because she did like I think a couple few short films, yes, and yeah. that helped her out. So for us, like, uh, they, they were, they, I think I definitely agree with them that we don't we don't really or we don't realize how much free time we really have right. when we're in college. In college, and I mean, I, I say I don't have free time, but the time that would be free time is me working on like games and stuff. So I think, I think if you're yeah, as long as your free time is kind of being productive and doing the thing that you want to do that can hopefully like get paid for and usually that is kind of the goal for people like get yep. paid for doing what you like and for us that's game development uh, what do you see as the biggest changes coming in the unity technology stack what teams have the most growth potential slash hiring potential so they mentioned to us three things Wait, i uh, don't know if we can mention them yeah we, we had to sign uh, as a disclaimer we had to sign an nda we did for have this. to sign an nda so i this, do not I think, think we could actually I will, talk about this okay i will actually have to edit this one i will send it to them first and they can tell me what i have to cut out yeah. um so we did sign an nda uh so let's talk about it okay we're not loud there, i guess i don't know Maybe, maybe we just don't talk about it. Let's just not it. talk about it. Yeah, to be okay. honest, not uh, talk about it. What was the question, though? I just wanted to know. Uh, like what do you see as the biggest changes coming in Unity? Oh, okay, And they yeah. did let us know, and I don't know if that's public. So I don't I don't just, think we're allowed to talk about it. Let's just not talk about that. Uh, how can I become successful with Unity? Make games? <laughs> use it. Yeah, use <laughs> Unity. <laughs> um, I, I, did, I did talk with him again about, like, uh, beginning, uh, beginning with Unity, and he really just said tutorials. The, the Unity itself, the Unity launcher has tutorials both baked right in, but my ears are popping. One sec. Yeah, I know Sam. Uh, <laughs> I wonder what. How did the What's causing that? Pressure just I wonder what this is gonna so. sound like in the microphone. I mean, just the. Oh yeah, wait. The does, do microphones pop? I don't know. No, they, but no, they don't. all this train racket. So that is very. They're not true. organic. Dude, my my ears actually will not pop. It popped just the in like pressure? three times as the pressure came on, so I'm okay. Then um. I can't swallow. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. <laughs> it feels uh, weird, man. Wait, what was the question? I forgot. I forgot too. <laughs> oh no, no. How to? Okay, so I, I asked him specifically. I had any tips, oh, yeah, yeah. tricks, or like how to use Unity effectively. And he said, like, he, I, I guess that was a very broad question. So he couldn't like give me a direct answer, right? Uh -huh. Because it's very broad. But I think he said specifically, like, if you're going into a project, try to focus on like one particular aspect. Like I think he mentioned as an example, he said I went into a game uh, jam and I was focusing very specifically on particle effects mm -hmm. because that way you learn how to use that system very effectively. Yeah, so yeah. in future projects, you can learn something else and still use those that si the other system sense. effectively. So effectively, just keep building on it. One thing they talked about a lot was um, uh, a prized uh, aspect of many of the people who are working in Unity are the kinds of people who grab at things, you know, pick yeah. up things that. Like, yeah, you know, like, do things that no one is doing, like organizing events or right. checking the club email and, you know. <laughs> I, I think, I'm just saying. I think that philosophy them. follows with 
this idea that when you're making a game or you know you want to make games, mm -hmm. uh, find all the different aspects of what that is. And just do them. And then and then make a project for every single one of them where you just focus hardcore on each, and by the time you know, yeah, yeah. you've at least partially mastered everything. I think he said if you're making a game, focus on the one thing that makes it fun, not like the five things that make it fun. Yes. Like, try to have, narrow have it down. Very focus, especially yeah. when you're on your own. It's yeah, a lot, it's, a lot more, it's a lot more difficult to... Uh, and they were talking about like producers and stuff. Like you, you need to de have deadlines, and you need to always make sure that you're like making progress. Uh, like agile development. I know they didn't say it directly, but that that's a that's, tool that's that you can use. That's basically agile development. Yeah. Is it as a tool you can use to help you? There, no. Um, I think he was. I think this is more for like if you're making like in a group. But he was saying like if you if there's like a showcase or something you can show it at. Uh, you should try to like hit a deadline before that so you can actually showcase it there. Right. Uh, like a. Indicate was one that was brought up. There's a lot of them. Day of the Devs, they're, they're a little bit, uh, not exclusive, but like picky about what games can show up there, but if you have something interesting, you might be able to get in. Sh just showing your games off and play testing. Like getting the feedback is important. Uh, MDA, I mean, they didn't bring up MDA, but I like bringing it up just because like, like focus, uh, I think, at least in James's class, it was focus on an aesthetic. And that's, that's kind of the same, but focus on that one element that makes your game, your game. Feel good, yeah. yeah. Uh, what are the uh, oh what what competes with Unity and how does the Unity like handle that? But we is did, that we did ask, I don't think that's an idea. No, 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 no. We, we did talk about that. I thought that was interesting though. Um, yeah, like they they sort of acknowledge the other engines are in this space. Basically, the way they said it is like they were like yeah, competition is good because even if the engine is doing something better than uh, better than we are, we can adapt our engine to either accommodate that, do it better than them, or just like have a different niche altogether. I think specifically the ones that were brought up, were, uh, or at least I brought it up because I use it, was Unreal Engine. Uh -huh. And he was talking about like, I think I think I can talk about this because it's a public feature. So he was talking about how Unreal has a blueprint system, so Unity has like a primitive like drag and drop system, uh -huh. right? So then they said like, yeah, we need to like make that more robust and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I think I, Unreal's blueprint system is very good. It's very good. Like obviously, I know I know a lot of your games were just were just the blueprints. All of my games are just blueprints. Yeah, because compiling and coding. Compiling compiling C plus plus with the engine is a pain in the ass because you have to compile the engine too into it. Point for Unity. Point for Unity. Uh, that, that is fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then at the same time, that's because it's so easy to work. I think. With I, I, yeah, I, I will say I think then. I, I still kind of think. I mean, I don't like giving points to yo-yo games because they their their education system went down the tank after Game Maker 2 came out and basically it's like F them at this point but they I still think they have the most accessible game engine just because the drag and drop is so it's, yeah but I mean that's, that's, that's why it's also like the weakest engine yes because it relies because the, the thing is Unreal is like one of the most powerful Unreal is probably more powerful than Unity in terms of rendering yes and they, they were mentioning that they're working on that yeah no but that, yeah but at the same time it's it's fairly accessible if you have like some background yes in engine, and yeah. Unity is like well, uh, but again, I think I think that speaks a little bit to the community that Unity has built, where the resources exist. It's just not in engine, and I think one part, one solution that they might be able to make is just link to them. No, but the you thing, know? the thing with that Shout is, out. I do think eventually Unreal will catch up to them, specifically because Unreal is open source. That is true. Oh, another thing that he mentioned was that if you're specifically in a technical field or uh, going for programming, uh, they do check GitHub. Yeah, she actually, um, uh, Jenny, the uh, Jenna, 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 yeah, Jenna, Jenna. Um, she actually told me that she actually recommended me to use GitHub. Yeah. For my recipe. Yeah. It, it's a good. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm glad to hear he that. He said, actually. like, he actually told me that, like, 50% of it is a resume, 50% of it. Well, oh, no, not that Zach mentioned, but he said. The, the the your GitHub is either as important or less important or less uh, than your actual resume <laughs> because it, because like the, the 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 resume is the stuff you want to show me but the GitHub is what you're actually doing right that makes sense and right. he, he, they check they look at everything apparently like he was even telling me like if you make a small commitment or just like a point like a comment on something on GitHub that's like hey I think this should be changed and people are saying like that was terrible or like I don't, you don't even know what you're talking about then it's like that speaks you know badly about you as like a person that knows what they're doing if your commit was like pushed to an open source project things like that and really that's not stuff I'm doing as much because like I, I've used GitHub for team projects, but that's about it. Usually, we're just kind of like closed about it. That just makes like, that just makes me wish I backed up Squash even more. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so sad about. It. 
I mean, I guess I'll just push stuff on GitHub at this point now. I'm like, here, here's code, you know. I know how to I do mean, it. I, I usually put my games on GitHub. That's another thing Unreal does really well. Uh, integra integration. integration with GitHub. Is I I haven't used. Does Unity? I'm sure Unity does have GitHub integration. I don't. I, don't, I haven't uh, used Unity. I don't think recently. it does by default. Oh, it's probably have, uh, something under, to the assets. Yeah, yeah, you can do it in the cloud now yeah. with the collaborative. Oh yeah, stuff, yeah, so, Unity yeah. collab. Oh, we did, oh we forgot to ask about that. I know that was a question. Well, yeah, I just yeah. started using it, so I have a. Lot yeah, yeah, of yeah. Are there plans for more free features in Unity, such as Unity collab? What positions? Oh, sorry. Uh, I think another thing we forgot to mention is Unity said one of their advantages is that they like buy a lot of like plugins or like integrate them in. Yeah, the there's a lot, and they really they really stepped up. I don't up know if that's a, I don't I don't know if that's a benefit because I feel a lot well, of a lot of the stuff they add are fe that features that already exist in other engines. Yes, so but a like, lot of their features that they're getting in are very well made because they were originally meant to be independent. That is true. Like they're, like they're standalone. Um, like the, the yeah. one of the 3D model viewers, the shader, they're oh wait. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. This the <laughs> shaders in Unity. Woo, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna not I think that's in the end. Like, what about the, about the, the, the camera thing? Can we talk about that? I have no idea. The cin cinna. That that's already out, right? That I think yeah, if, they it's said the, they bought yeah, it. if it's the, if it's an acquirement it's probably public. Okay, yeah. so they they okay. bought a, a camera thing. The, that was originally not even made for games. That was made for films. For films, yeah. Right, yeah. But uh, let's see. I think I think buying uh, things that other people make is an interesting way of saying that they still kind of trust the direction that their user base goes in when they make things. Like, I don't know. I mean, I would be surprised if Unreal and other game engines didn't do anything like that at all. When they when Unity right. buys those plugins, do you guys have any idea if? Uh, they they hire the people that created them, or they just that is a good a question. I, I don't mean, know. Okay. I would hope so. Maybe if I had to guess, but yeah, I feel like a lot of them don't. I, I think it depends on the situation. I I do think a lot of the people who make plugins for Unity don't necessarily want to work at Unity. Yeah, I mean, if, right. I, if I had to guess, I think what happens is when they buy the plugin and the plugin goes on the asset store, maybe they just buy the rights to it for Unity, and they they continue working on that plugin, but now it's just part of Unity. Right, because, I mean, and it's just an asset. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That'll be my guess. And yeah, Unity, yeah, Unity is know. definitely not the only idea because I know Unreal has. Um, I think it's. Unreal has been acquiring stuff. It's as cloth well. physics specifically. I think. Yeah, is, but I, I think yeah. it's. Is it? Are they working with Nvidia on that? I don't remember. I will. What I will say is, I think Unity is being a lot more aggressive about it, and they're. No, okay, they're, so they're targeting. Thing, I think Unreal. Like big, big Unity works with like smaller developers. Unreal, I think, works with like because Unreal works with Maya. Unreal works with Nvidia. They work with um, what's the physics system? Physics. Okay. So they work. They Nvidia used to work. physics. Yeah, they work with. Yeah, so that's part of Nvidia then. But yeah, you know, they they work with big developers on that. I think Unity works with a lot of like smaller developers with plugins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. That's a good thing. Uh, what positions would the intern take at Unity? Are internships paid or unpaid? Oh, we didn't. Okay, I'm oh, I forgot to ask. They're probably paid. They're probably. I would imagine yeah. it's San Francisco. Yeah, it's probably yeah. paid. It's, I'm sure they're paid internships. Um, You're losing money if you don't get paid in San Francisco. Yeah. Positions at Unity? Oh, the other thing about internships is don't be afraid to take them after you graduate. Yeah, that's, yep. they said that. Yeah. And remember to be paid for those internships, especially if you are a, uh, especially if you're a programmer or like a high skill thing, even an artist. Because that's just that's just free work they're getting if you're not being paid. Yep. And that's not fair. Uh, think of it as like an entry position or something. But uh, positions at uni, I think they've said like it depends on what projects they're working on, right? And like where you'd fit. Oh, the, oh, the that, full stack thing that uh, that, full stack that was funny. Play. Yeah. You Do you want? Okay, I'll tell you. Yeah, you so go basically, for it. Uh, one of the employees that we were talking to, so she said when she initially applied, she basically they asked her like, what do you want to work on? And she, she was like, yeah, I'm fine working on whatever, right? And then they were like, okay, I don't have time to just like filter through that and decide what you work on. And then eventually, she decided to rephrase it and say she was a full stack developer, which effectively meant the same thing, right? You just yeah. work on whatever. But everyone started like, because of that buzzword, everyone was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's great. We need full stack. See, I thought, I thought full stack developer just meant that you could program in like every language. No, full stack developer means front end, back end, and anything like in between. Yeah. Uh, oh. I assumed I it was like a, a like you know basically like all types of languages. No, no, no. It, it means that you're, uh, um, from what I understand, it means that you do both front end, back end, and anything like intermediate too. Right. Oh, so some I people see. say like a web full stack, and they're usually referring to a specific set of tools that does everything that completes the website. So. Oh, I see. Yeah, it won't be like all languages, but JavaScript. 
Yeah, yeah I mean, like, me. yeah. yeah. It depends on what, like, if you're on a mobile full stack developer, then you're probably using, like, the Android SDK or something. Yeah. Uh, what's the best way to get into the industry? Oh, we talked about the personal projects. Personal projects are very important. We already mentioned that. Best we way said to get that into enough the in- times. Yeah. yeah. Personal <laughs> projects, by the way. Um, best way to get into the industry. I don't remember actually. I think I think it's just apply apply, apply, apply yeah apply everywhere. Yes, basically. apply everywhere. I think oh, she definitely. said even if it says like three to five years, years. and you only yes. have like one or two. Apply everywhere that says three to five years, and I I'd like to emphasize that point because I think that I see a lot of senior developer positions for things like discord or whatever and they feel way out of touch you know like the requirements for those are obviously 10 plus years experience yeah so not so yeah right so avoid senior job status and but one like if you're close like if you're like one or two years off definitely try because uh, like we mentioned it before where the enthusiasm factor of actually being able to yeah. be passionate about it and work work hard and willing to pick up think, new skills that are needed for the project are important I think another thing they said is um even if you don't fit a job exactly that they're offering, they might just make like a new job or like some modification to the job if you have like a like a lucrative enough skill set. So mm-hmm. yeah, like they want like make make yourself so desirable that they want to fit you with right. the project. Yeah. Show passion, show versatility. That's what they were saying. Uh, let's see what uh, what skills are important for an artist working in Unity to learn to work in the engine? This is a Lily question. Yeah. What did they say? Yeah, did you talk? You talked to the artist. So, let's. What are yeah, some? This is this is you. Some art I angles. I did not on ask Unity. for that question. I just asked uh, um, general resume questions. So, okay. What, what, okay, what what do you think an artist should have on their resume and portfolio then? It's a good substitute uh, question, especially in game design. A good um, a good like a good strong portfolio basically is the like the first six second rule. Yeah, yeah. Remember, you guys remember that? Yeah, we, we yeah. talked about Talk that. Talked a little bit about that, yeah. Um, and basically, just like, uh, there's not really anything different from, or anything significant from what, from what we just discussed, so. Okay. You can't add anything that makes animation different. No, just generally, or just like, oh, just, uh, make sure you go to the I don't know, she's like, I don't, I don't, she didn't really say anything significant. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what makes you these? Uh, what makes you these stand against other game engines? Touch I already talked about that. Yeah, yeah, community. Um, I, I, I versatility know. with engines. Oh, versatility. Yeah. Really, honest, it is easy to export in Unity. I will say. No, not only that, you can use it for things other than games. That's true. Yeah. I'm kind of curious how you do the metrics on on community, though. I mean, maybe it's blatantly obvious, but how is Unreal? Well, I think you have a Unity community. login, and like you have an Unreal login, so maybe they count right. that. That okay. might. Well, one thing I've noticed is that I can go back and see uh, people having problems on a stack exchange with Unity from two years ago, and the solutions still apply to problems that I was trying to yeah. fix now, which I found really interesting. Well, another thing that I do want to mention is I did not know that this is like way off topic. I did not know Horse. I did not know Hearthstone was a Unity game. Yeah. I, I actually thought it was like I thought that was Blizzard's in-house engine. No. No, that that that. That I just I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah, there were a couple of things that really caught me. Were off there guard. any like okay, so slightly off topic of the games that we saw? Because like on their staircase, they have a list of like a bunch of games that they that were made in Dude. Unity on their staircase. Yeah. Were any? What, did any catch your eyes? Like I didn't know that was Unity. See, the thing is, the games I recognize, I usually look up what engine they're made in. So I would kind of like me too. Like I knew Enter the Gungeon was Unity. I, I knew Hollow Knight was Unity. Hollow, Hollow I knew Knight's Ori Unity. was Unity. Cuphead was Unity. Yeah, I knew Cuphead. I, I you know I probably should have guessed it, but I don't think I knew Monument Valley was. Unity. I never knew what it was I don't. At all. I don't remember all the games. Angry Birds, I didn't think Angry Birds. I, I didn't think Angry Birds was, yeah, I thought that was like, I thought like Team Fusion. <laughs> some, just, I, some just random thing you just threw together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there, was, there was definitely something there that caught me off guard and I can't remember. Oh, yeah, maybe I, I'll I come back to you. Uh, what are the best tool for an artist, oh, I didn't phrase this right. What is the best tool for an artist to use with Unity, Lily? The best tool? tool? For with an Unity? I mean, do we, do we have the answer? I don't think we have that even answer. No. Yeah, I mean, what Let's would be ask that. I don't know what the obvious uh, answer I mean, be would like be Maya, to that. Maya, Blender, shit like Right, that. but I mean, Unity, despite primarily being a 3D engine, functions perfectly fine in 2D. So, I mean, Lily has probably used just a spreading tool for pixel-based 2D stuff. I'm sure it works in Unity all the same. So, I, don't I mean, know I guess that's just dependent on what you want to do, isn't it? 
Here's yeah. what they do. They figure out how to start integrating 3D modeling programs into, you know, Unity. into Unity. Didn't they have be... one? Didn't they buy one? I remember like there was a thing on the Discord that people were talking about where, like Unity bought this like 3D modeling thing. It was insane. Mm, I only know that they bought uh, like, what is it? Pro Pro Builder, which is yeah, yeah, for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's with, with the models already made and I guess you're just placing them. I think that's. Fine. I think that's mostly what it is. Uh, let's see. For all this. Probably what stop do we have to get off on? It should just be San Jose Duradon. Yeah, Duradon. Yeah. Uh, is it better to be highly specialized in one kind of skill set or be more of a jack of all trades? Hey, okay, I think he was saying um, specifically. He was saying if you're working at a smaller company, you naturally have, have to, to do be, a lot yeah, of different yes, things. Yeah, yeah. But if you're working in like a larger company. Then you you can just specialize, specialize, you can specialize in one thing. Well, and so to follow with all of their resume advice, I would think that while you're trying to find a, a place, you should definitely um, specialize first and try to branch out where you can. Because that like, also makes you stand out if you're very special, if you're right. very skilled in like one thing. Right, right, right. And I mean, like, and and specialize in the place that you are passionate about, as we've said a hundred thousand times. But like. That where that versatility counts is where you practice other parts. I, I'm wondering if that question is was to be asked more as like a where within game design, or mm. in a general sense of because I mean people might focus hardcore on making a game. Yeah. But if that question is I mean more let's like maybe game, we can talk about a little bit of the roles that they were mentioning. Like we have like a, they talked about the design. Like they talked about I'm gonna show James again. They talked about a designer, a producer, a, a project yeah. manager, which is the same as producer, but like Anal a programmer. But they had, they had yeah. analytics and stuff too. Anal analytics. Um, number crunching, stuff like that. Yeah. There are a lot quality. of things that you can do in game development. That, that, and I did, that, there's a lot of things you can do that aren't even like related to actually making the game. It's more like yeah. supporting. Marketing. Marketing. Yeah, marketing. Marketing is huge. Marketing is huge. Yeah, there were not that many people there that dealt directly with the code based in the engine. Right? No, none of them did. Well, some of them. Some I thought of them there were working was one, on stuff. I thought there was one engineer. No, but he wasn't working on the engine. Okay. He was working on like a bat. He was working on analytics for the engine. That's funny, I guess. That, I, yeah, the no, whole I building, don't think analytics uh, for mobile games made with the engine. That was that was Andrew. No, that was one of them. Yeah, that was no, that was one of them who was working. On, we can't talk about that. Damn it. Well, no, we know what he's working on. No, no, I, I, I can't say what he's working on. Oh, really, oh, yeah. They haven't yeah. released that yet. What is shining in your eye, by the way? Oh. <laughs> then, uh, oh, good. Yeah, they. No, it's shining in Kevin's eye. Yeah. <laughs> No, but yeah, they. I can't talk about that because they haven't released. Yeah, that's it fine. That's yeah. fine. That's fine. Yeah, I'm assuming if it's not if it's not released, we probably can't talk about it. Yeah. Um, what kind of work do employers look for in a portfolio? I think we touched on that again. What kind of work? Projects. Pro projects. It's the P word. Projects. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, but I think they also said they were they looked uh, uh, like past experience with like work. Yeah. Uh, will personal work outside of in-game assets be important on a no, portfolio? No, never, obviously not. <laughs> yeah, obviously, I yeah, know, projects. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, uh, so, before we like transition, because those are all the questions, there was another one uh, thing that I talked about Mark with was that um, uh, the two the two like negative pushaways for people who want to get into game development as a profession. Money. Crunch time, oh, okay, money, crunch time, <laughs> and job stability. And he more or less told me that you're not going to get the job stability as a problem. That's just not going to happen. That's that's a, that's a fever dream. Wait, wait, wait. Could you describe job stability? Job stability is um, basically how long you're able to stay at one job, how likely it is your company is going to fail because of the changing market. Okay. And but, uh, as an as an as an illustration of this, Telltale recently had oh, yeah, essentially oh. a, like a collapse. Okay. Of the company due to financial issues. Telltale got and, annihilated. But yeah, they got annihilated. All those 225 workers got laid off. No, uh, no was Telltale severance. Games, yeah. I heard no being severance. Sued. Yeah, they're being sued because there was no not enough notice. No severance pay for any of those workers that got laid off. It's it's terrible. Yeah, because um, some people like uh, some people were hired like a week before they laid all those off. Yeah, yeah, some people were hired a week before. Some people were hired the day that they broke the company apart. They they brought people into the office that were looking for. I mean, so that job opportunities could be discussed. And since then, there's been a lot of stuff on social media from other companies asking for Telltale workers. So, yeah. I don't know. It's not like it's it's not perfect, and it still sucks. But it's, but it's, I it's think, what's happened. I, I, think, I think one of the big important things he said is, if you're getting into games for money, you're not doing it. You're not right doing it. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. yeah. You are not in it for the money. You are in it because you love games. And Basically. Right. Th all of us. All of I us think he was games. saying, like, and everyone who works in that could be working somewhere else and making a lot more money. Yeah. So if you're in it for the money, don't bother. 
But if you love games, do what you love. Yeah. Uh, oh, the other one was Crunch Time, and they all, and they said again that agile development and make sure make sure making sure you have a project manager, make sure you have a producer can help mitigate crunch time. And he said he bragged about this at the uni offices that they don't really they don't really have crunch time that much. It happens, but it's not as much because they have good PMs. Uh, I think a point though about job stability is that even in like I guess you you won't get like laid off or fired. But I think in even other software engineering jobs, I think the general consensus or at least what I've talked to with people and what I've read is that you shouldn't stay in the same job or company for like a long time yeah. because you won't be able to move up. <laughs> if you want to move up, you have to like apply other places right. or like keep your options open basically. So e even then, like you're, I think even in actual engineering, you're not expected to stay in the same job for a long time. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, so that was the list of questions. We can move on to like <coughs> anecdotes and fun stuff about you and me, I guess. Or anything specific about the people you guys talk to, because... Yeah, yeah. Um, I... I don't think I can talk about what we I talked about. We can... Yeah, I mean, I, that, that is kind of a problem. I mean, I think... Because uh, he was telling me specifically about like the products they're working yeah, on. Yeah, so NDA. Uh, I think... Well, we can talk about how badly... Uh, Carter got whooped in mm. oh, Beat Saber. Oh gosh. <laughs> Man, Mark just stomped him. I That's really I wish video. Carter had gone first. I yeah. feel like that would have been That would have been amazing. Like, he goes funny. first, he like dies in like No, he, he does like okay and then this guy just smashes <laughs> him. That would have been way funnier. That would have been amazing. Oh that man. Been way funnier. Um Lily tried job simulator. How oh was that was fun. I liked it a lot. It was actually more fun than I anticipated it, cause like I watched it on um, being played on YouTube quite a bit, but just like actually getting to play it, like having the sensation of playing it, was totally a different experience. I loved it. I will totally go to the VR lab on campus and try it out. I think I actually have to buy Beat Saber, cause Rob does not have a copy. I will buy it. I'll share it with him, and we'll just have people in the in the, in the VR lab playing that, Beat that Saber. That would be so different. Dude, Beat Saber. Wait, like, yo, for, I knew it was fun. For Watching it is pretty awesome. Oh, table with Beat Saber, dude, that'd be sick. We're tabling next. Well, actually, no, we're tabling. No, this podcast goes up in next week. The podcast goes up next week. No, the podcast goes. The podcast. This podcast goes up next week, and tabling is next week. Oh. So when this podcast is released, it's actually the day we're tabling. Unfortunate. Wow. But that would still be super dope. So hey, if you're listening to this, stop listening to it and go out to our tabling. <laughs> are you? Wait, VR. what time are you uploading it? Uh, it gets uploaded roughly at around like one p.m. Uh, we're tabling at like three, right? We're tabling at one. Oh, we're, oh, so okay, exactly when it exactly. goes. Exactly. I mean, I can put it up like a little bit earlier, but anyway. Anything else? <clears throat> they had the bouncer at the door. He was pretty chill. He wouldn't yeah. take a photo for us, though. Yeah, I mean, he had, he has to watch the door. Yo, they uh, did you see that uh, they had the showers in the bathroom? That was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. What the heck? They must have. That, let's that talk about let's talk about you in these bathrooms for a sec. I didn't even go. So They're pretty I don't know. okay. Yeah. They're pretty pretty awesome bathrooms. They had apparently they had mouthwash in there too. Like, yeah, mouthwash and lotion. Uh, Carter thought it was soap. <laughs> Did he actually use it like soap? That would be great. I'm not sure. But uh, that was the thing that happened. <laughs> Completely non-viscous fluid as soap. <laughs> you never know, right? Um, I was glad to see the office spaces when we actually went up the floor. Uh, you know, I was too. Like, I, I wanted to see, like, they kind of had a cubicle style, like, in, like, the second floor where, like, the analytics people were. Yeah. Where they had, like, privacy and stuff. But other than that, like, every other floor was basically just kind of how I imagined the game developer studio to be like just monitors yeah. and keyboards everywhere everyone has like their own personal space but it's like really wide open people are yeah. just kind of talking yo their rec room did you see that rec room with the safe and the ping pong table in yes. Catan yep can we talk about that that's crazy that was oh, old style safe. Oh, no yeah, the safe's not the important the safe, right? the safe is just like part of the building yeah, I mean the safe, was history, the safe is yeah. not important but like <laughs> But it is important, dude. They had so many board games, and I, and I love the fact that when we showed that when we were like, "Yo, board games!" The Catan, he's got like pandemic in there. And we're, he's just like, "Okay, so you guys are actually gamers." Okay, good. Because <laughs> yeah. if you haven't played Catan yet, you're, you're not a gamer. That's like. That's true. Well, okay, now that's that's. I mean, I can't. Yeah, that's that's, hard, a, that's hyperbole, yeah. but. See, the thing is, the thing about Catan is, whenever my friends want to play it, I'm like, why don't we just play Civilization instead? <laughs> 
You gotta have the raw I know. board game based experience. Yes. Dude, Catan is coming out for the Switch. I have no idea if that's made uni or if related, but Catan on great. the Switch. Well, Dude, why Pandemic not just play on the Civilization. Switch. <laughs> why not? Because okay, no, no, it's cool. Because uh, you take out all the thing on the controllers, so you can just use the touch screen. It's kind of cool. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, yeah. Does that cover it for you? I feel like, I feel like, well, like we have a lot. To, okay. It really, like, more than half of it, we actually just can't talk about. That is very true. Well, that may be an impersonal discussion. I feel like there's not that much that I I got from that that they applied to the NDA, so you guys must have talked to some people. With I was some talking to one of the engineers, yeah. and he was talking about a product they're currently developing. I was, I was curious about what they're working on, and like, I, I was asking him, like, yeah, how do I get hired? What are some good tips for resumes? And like, he talked about like some projects and stuff. But, like, okay. Well then, yeah, we, we talked about projects here, we talked about uh, pretty much everything that was general resume advice, so pretty much covers most of what we got for the general public out of that. Yeah, so next time, show up so that you can get all these juicy details that we can't divulge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lily, would you like to add anything? Um, well, I just had a, a really, really good time in the offices, like, it was so great, like, I had a great time. It was good. It was it was a fun office. It was fun, yes. Four hundred. We only saw half of it, by the way, because remember. Because we yeah we weren't in yeah. like the top like what four floors. We we missed two of the floors, and they remember they had the other building like they built a tunnel oh, yeah, to the they other building. Oh yeah, they have another building. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And we never went to the the building that we were in. But I mean, I'm, I'm sure most of that is just office spaces. Yeah. After we hit the third floor, he said it was the same floor for the fourth, fifth, and sixth. Yeah. So. But, uh, so, I guess, are we wrapping up? I mean, is there anything so. else? Is your battery almost dead? We can no, just talk about no. something. We can just talk about, like, a different topic. Okay, well, that was our Unity Tool discussion. Um, what's the next topic? Because I, I don't want to eat into next week's docket, so. Um, what makes horror games scary? <laughs> okay, what makes horror games scary? We did try, I think someone tried it. Not, not it was really a horror game. It was, like, a zombie game. It was, it was like, like, a zombie game. It was really theory. funny, actually. Okay, here's another anecdote. It was really funny when that when uh, he didn't know how to reload his gun, so he was just like flailing at the zombies. No, and they started shooting his own feet. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Um, okay, what makes a horror game scary? Music, sound is so important in horror yes. games. Sound, sound is, is so, so so important. Um, like you can you can have, can you have scary? Can you be scared without sound? Yeah. Like a, a jump scare could do it, but is that like aside from jump scares, is there a way you can scare someone without? Well, I, I, okay, atmosphere and sound, obviously, I think. It's uh, you, you can scare someone purely on visuals, I think. And you can also scare someone just with sound. That's true. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I mean, like that's what I'm saying. It's not. It's not like one is necessary over yeah. the other. Like. And I think. Oh, what was Unity talk? What was the? Because I mean, the, the 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 sub game I was telling you about. If you're in a sub, you're not going to hear any audio. The audio is just going to be like your radar. And this, no, but uh, no, no, but see that is sound because it's the lack of sound. That, that, that's fair. Like yeah. it's like it's like a like I, I think I environment can really uh, can really have a huge impact on that. Like I, I like the idea of the submarine horror game just because if it if it is in the VR space and you're kind of just sitting there and there's no sound, like you can just hear like like water, like kind of like. I mean, the like just is, like just white sound. noise, water, and then you hear like the bleeping of the radar and the and the switches, and it's just like like dark outside. You just have your searchlight or whatever the submarine. It, it, it really gives you a yeah. sense and of then I think if you break that with like an animal sound that yeah, just yeah. increases attention exactly yeah. especially um, since the sounds are very echoey underwater man I really want to jump in this stuff but it's like NDA we can't talk about it what? like the unity stuff but anyway oh that's okay I thought you were talking about the sub game I was like no we yeah, came we up can, with that we on can the... talk about that hold on yeah. I, think, I think we can just end it here probably honestly yeah. Uh, do we have like, this could be a short. Is there anything else from Unity that you guys want to talk about? Um, anything about uh, the Unity tour? Nope. I no. think. Uh, yeah, it's covers it. What I got. Yeah. All right. Thank you all for listening. This is the Game Development Club at San Jose State. Signing out. We'll see you all next week. Tabling is happening right now. You should go to it. Okay, Peace. Bye.